What's up folks? Welcome back to whatever this is. Let's say for a moment that you are designing a multi-page document like magazine, brochure, catalog, book. You're going along the process, you've picked all the typefaces, you've finalized the page structure, and perfectly designed the 8,000, 37,000, 123,674 words of the document. And you immediately ship it off to the client for approval. And they come back to you 15 seconds later and say, it looks great, except we don't really dig that modernist font that you've got there, can you switch it all to Papyrus and Comic Sans? Now before you go and proverbially punch that client in the neck with your next inflammatory email, you remember that you actually need that client because they're going to pay you to sustain the caffeine addiction that you established while you were building this project in the first place. But switching all those typefaces is almost going to take you as long as it did to build the project to begin with. What is a frustrated designer to do? Allow me to be the hero and come to your rescue and I'm bringing my faithful sidekick, the style sheet. Let's go. That is not the kind of sheet I'm talking about. The style sheets that I'm talking about, they come in different sizes, shapes, and forms, but we're gonna be talking about the ones within Adobe InDesign. Now, if you have never used style sheets within Adobe InDesign, then you may be asking yourself, well, what are style sheets, Dave? Without getting too technical about it, because I don't think I could get too technical about it, basically a style sheet is essentially a protocol, a set of commands that you give to the program to say that anytime I do this thing over here, apply these things over here over here. For instance, if you had a headline within some sort of editorial document, then you wanted to make sure that anytime there was a headline in that editorial document, that you would apply the papyrus font. Please don't ever apply papyrus font to your headline. Please, but you could. And then let's say you had a subhead underneath there and you wanted the head subhead to be in Comic Sans. Please don't do that. Instead, use something a little bit more trusting, like Helvetica or Times Roman, or uh, something else other than Comic Sans. Don't use Comic Sans. Little sidebar to this is, I've always had it in the back of my head that I was gonna des design something, a poster, uh, a, a piece of work, whatever. I was gonna design something using only Comic Sans just to see if it's possible to build something with that font. It's a bit of a pipe dream because I'm pretty sure I can't. So the next question you might ask is, well, who would need to use these style sheets, Dave? And that's a pretty broad, question, or rather the answer is pretty broad because a lot of people could use them for different things. Even if you were just building a simple one or two page brochure, if there was ever a desire to want to change things on the fly with your typefaces, with your layout, with your time, the way you structure your pages, your columns, whatever, if you wanted to structure any of that, you could do so with your style sheets and then instantaneously change it for Another client, the same thing, but a new month. I want to do the same catalog, but it's all different products and maybe you want to update the, the typeface for next year. Lots of different applications for style sheets. If you want to avoid having to change every single thing by hand, if your client decides on a whim to change the typeface, want to do something else, add something, put a new section in, you want to avoid having to make those changes on the fly manually all the time, you will want to apply these style sheets because it's going to save you time and heartache, I promise you. And when do you use them? We're gonna do that right now. Okay, so what we have here is a really basic editorial page. It's not very interesting, it's not very exciting. It's pretty standard fare. You can see this in pretty much any magazine that you would find on the newsstand. I wasn't going for contemporary progressive design. I was going for, hey, let's get this job done. But because that's the mindset, we're gonna have a really easy time explaining this, or rather, I'm gonna have an easy time explaining this, and you're gonna have an easy time listening. What we want to do here, and the reason, again, why we're trying to do this is that if I wanted to have 
text like this throughout an entire document, whether it's a brochure, catalog, magazine, whatever. If I wanted to be able to have this information readily available to me and be able to change it as quickly as I possibly could whenever I wanted, then I'm gonna wanna have these style sheets. With this basic page, I have the standard hierarchy of editorial flow between your headlines, your subheads, up here where my byline is because it says by Dave Conry, that is my byline. That's a stretch, I know, but go with it. This is my first paragraph, which you don't always see. It might be called out, it might not be called out. Your body copy, your body paragraphs, and your subtitles, and then finally, your captions. I don't have any page numbers on here. We could do page numbers too, but it's not really that. Uh, page numbers is like a, you don't really need a style for page numbers. It's kind of something built into the document. You can do it if you want, but once we figure this out, you'll say, hey, I can do my page numbers if I want to, Dave. So as you see here in my paragraph styles palette, I have exactly two styles already established. One is the basic paragraph, which is the standard, which comes with every single whatever you do. Second is the body, which I already established just for the sake of just having something. True story, I was actually explaining styles and what they mean. I was explaining to my son. He didn't quite get it, so I had to actually do this, so I just did that. So there you go, body's already established. Now, I'm not gonna jump into the body yet. We'll get to that, but let's start with the headline. And now what I wanna do first here is I wanna make styles out of every single element. So I need one for the headline, one for the subhead, one for the byline, one for this first paragraph, one for the body, which I already have, and then one for subtitles, and then captions. So we're going to use that and we're going to assume that what I do on this page translates throughout the entire document that I decide to make. As I'm going through that document, I can make little tiny adjustments to each one. Like let's say I don't want a caption in white on another page. Maybe I want it in black. Maybe I want it in gray. Maybe I want it in yellow. I can make that change. But the style sheet is already there established that I can just start applying these things to everything. But I gotta establish the styles first. So let's establish some style. The way I go about this is really simple. I select the text that I want to create a style on. Say for instance, the headline. I go up here in the styles palette and I go new paragraph style. I'm just gonna call this headline. I'm not gonna base it on anything because I want the headline to stand alone by itself. Now, you'll notice that because I've already selected the text, it's already populated the information from that text is. This is Roboto typeface, black italic, 64 points, 52 letting, all caps. I've got it previewed if I wanted to change it. Let me just, let's go here real quick. Let's change it just for a sec. Let's change this to 72 and you see that it jumped up in size. Let's go back to 64. See, it goes up and down. Okay, so there you go. I have the, the basic con the formats, the, the the scale, and all this other indents and spacing. If I have any, I don't have any on this one. I don't have any of these other things. Tabs, paragraph rules. I can establish all of that stuff. I can do it ahead of time and then automatically apply it to when I make this new paragraph style, or I can make this new paragraph style and then start applying these things to it. Like so let's say I wanted to add a paragraph border, paragraph rule. I could do that if I wanted to. Not going to do that here, but I could. I can do that fix it on the fly. And I know what's happening because I've got the preview selected right down there. Let's go ahead and hit byline since it's next in line. These are all the same. I'm not, I don't even have to select the whole text. In fact, I don't even have to select all the text. I can just place my cursor right there in between and it will automatically pick that up. New paragraph style, byline. Again, picked up Roboto Italic, 10 points. I wanna show you one thing. This is important. You're gonna wanna make sure to apply style to the current selection. You may not always want to. If I want it to establish to not just any future time I use a byline, but the one that I'm actually on right now, I wanna make sure that apply style to selection is selected. Again, no indents, no spacing, no tabs on this one. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit okay. This one is obviously our subhead. So we're gonna do this again. New paragraph style, no changes. No, 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 this other stuff. Apply style to the section, click okay. Now I'm gonna do something here that I want to show you. If you notice here in my first paragraph, my introductory paragraph, in fact, that's what I'm gonna call it. There is a hyphen on this word. I don't want that hyphen. I do not want that hyphen, but I'm gonna show you how I can fix that right here on the spot. I'm gonna select my type in there, my cursor in there. I'm gonna create a new paragraph style. Intro paragraph. I'm gonna go down here to hyphenation. I'm gonna uncheck hyphenate. What this is gonna happen is that word is gonna fall over to the next line, but as soon as I un click it, it fixed it. Oh, it actually jumped back to the main line. That's even better. 
So I can have it on, I can have it off. Have it on, 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 have <laughs> You get what I'm saying. You might like hyphens. I'm not a big fan of hyphens. Now, like I already said, body is already being used. Good to go. I don't need to fix anything there. Now let's change or let's add our subtitle. Subtitle, everything's good. Not even gonna bother with that. I'm gonna get out of that box and into this box. New paragraph style, caption. Here's another thing I'm gonna do. Right now it's highlighted with orange and black, but it's actually white text, but I don't want all of my captions to be white text. I want all my captions to be black text. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this. I'm gonna come down here to character color, change my main color. This is my, for this is my fill color, this is my outline. Don't need an outline on your type. You might do that, but don't. I'm gonna choose black. Now, you can see that it changed it. I don't want this particular one to be black. I want all future ones maybe to be black, but this one I want to be white. So, we're gonna change, we're gonna select it, and just going into our colors, rather our swatches, I'm gonna change it back to paper or white as it is. Now, what happened there when I did that is you'll notice something interesting. You notice when I click on body, oh, I didn't apply. I didn't apply the body copy to everything. I gotta apply that, but we'll get to that in a second. Go up here, body copy is selected, and you see everything's good. Go here to the subtitle, subtitle is selected. Now my OCD is kicking in a little bit. Normally I would reorganize this whole palette right here, get them so that the hierarchy is in the right place. I'm not gonna, ah, oh, what not? All right, well let's do it, okay. Headline, subhead, byline, intro, body, subtitle, caption. It just, I, I can't help myself. Anyway, so like I said, when I select that, you see that it is selected subtitle. When I select the, this, that's a paragraph, I don't want that, I'm gonna actually, well that's a first paragraph. Oh, that's something else I need to, I just realized I needed to add one more thing. One thing that I like to do after subtitles is I like to add a first paragraph setup where there is no indent. You can see the indent on the body. In fact, we didn't even look at that. Let's go here. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna look at the body. Actually, it should be applied body. Basic character formats, indents and spacing, I already have a quarter inch established for that. But for the first paragraph, I kind of, I don't like it when, let's just apply it here. Like that looks weird to me when I have that subtitle and then I have that indent, it looks weird to me. So I like to establish a first paragraph that goes after situations like this. This is not to be confused with the introductory paragraph. This is something entirely different. Well, not entirely different, but somewhat different. And you'll notice, no indents, making sure it's applied, yes, there we go. And I'm gonna bring that right there in front of body. Now, back to the caption, I'll get to that other stuff in a minute, back to the caption real quick. This plus right here, that plus right there means that the caption has the style applied to it, but changes have been made. That means that, hey, it's not exactly like it's supposed to be. It's a little different. Same thing would be here. Let's say I'm gonna change this. This is supposed to be first paragraph, but let's say I decide to open this up a little bit with my letting or whatever and spacing or whatever. Let's see, let's open that up. That plus sign came up there. And like, that's not right. It's telling me, hey, this isn't quite right. And they are right. It's not right, so I'm going to option click. We'll change that back. Let me go do that again. The plus is there. I hold the option or probably alt on PC and click, and it goes right back to where it's supposed to be. Same would be here for this caption. If I go option click, it changes it back to black. But I don't want this one black. So we're going back here. We don't have to re establish a whole new caption just for white. You could if you felt like you were going to use sometimes white captions, sometimes black captions, sometimes. If you wanted to do that, you could. That's totally up to you. I just like to have it a little bit more flexible, have one so that I don't get them mixed up and then change it as I go. Now here's something else I want to show you. This is the last thing before we go into what do we do next. So I want to apply these styles, the same style, to these other paragraphs. This is marked as basic paragraph right now and I don't want that. So I'm going to come over here to my tool palette and I'm going to go to the eyedropper. Now don't get confused with the color theme tool. You're talking about the eyedropper tool. You want that. So I'm going to select that type and then I'm going to apply it to anything. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and start here. Even though I know this is supposed to be first paragraph, I'm gonna start here just because. See, it automatically applied everything there. Body paragraph to the entire body. So now every time, anywhere I click, you'll see if I go out of here and go into any one of these other things. It's body, body. This one's not body, obviously, because it's subtitle. Oh, why isn't that applied? Oh my gosh. Oh, because I didn't apply it to that one. Subtitle. So let's see, body, 
Subtitle, body, 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 body. I don't want this one to be body. I want this one to be first paragraph, so I'm gonna click on that. And I'm gonna go eyedropper, that sucker. I'm gonna make sure I apply to the whole thing because something's been weird going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So there you go. The styles are all applied. This is the last bit. This is the last little bit. Why would I do all this? Why would I go through all this work, Dave? Why would I want to do all this? Because a very simple possibility that you may decide that Roboto, which is the font for this body copy, you don't want Roboto anymore. You want it to be Badoni. Instead of changing all of the type for every single page on every single paragraph, I'm going to go in here to body. I'm going to go to basic color form or character formats. I'm going to change that to, let's go find our Badoni and make it 12 just for fun. Boom. Change, just like that. Let me back that up. Command Z, Command Shift Z, Command Z, Command Shift Z, Command Z, Command Shift Z. But there you go, that's the point. If I wanted to change the typeface for every single element of the body, I could, just like that. If I wanted to add the paragraph rules, if I wanted to change the color, if I wanted to do anything, any change any kind of attribute, to that particular paragraph style than I could, just like that. If I wanna go back up here, wanna go up here and change the headline, change the color to blue, dark blue, now it is. It's not like I selected that type effect, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna unclick that, and I'm gonna go back in here, I'm gonna go back in and change the headline, change the color one more time to yellow, or to pink, or to cyan, or to green. I can do that as many times as often as I want. That's why you use paragraph styles. You can also do the same thing. I'm not gonna go deep into this, but you can also be doing the same thing to character styles. Now, character styles only apply to very specific characters. Let's say, for instance, I wanted to change this word paragraph to, it's medium right now, but I wanted it medium italic and I wanted it only to apply to that or some other word, then I go in here, new character style, call it dumb, dumb reason for italics, okay? So now, I've got that. And if I want to change this word character to the same character style, I just go boom. Here's the other thing, character styles supersede paragraph styles. That means they will be applied before paragraph styles. If I change a paragraph style, like let's just say for instance I decided to change the body to that body, you'll notice that character and paragraph are still italicized. But I don't want that. So anyway, so there you go, folks. That's it. That's pretty much it. I know it's a little bit long-winded to go about this, but there is character styles. There's paragraph styles. That's styles in general. There's also object styles where, for instance, like if I wanted to apply, I'm not going to go into this, but let's say, for instance, I wanted to have boxes that had this kind of uh, indentation or rather wrap around where it was pushing the type around. See if I push this here, it pushes the type away. And I wanted to have it inset and I wanted to have it this color and I wanted to make sure that the whatever goes into it is in this particular paragraph style. I can establish an object style to do that anytime I create an object. I'm not going to do that, but we can do that. If you want me to do that, if you want to see that in action, do me a favor and go ahead and comment below. Put something in there saying, yes, Dave, I want to know more about object styles. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not the best on them. I don't use them very often, but we can go at it together. So that's the basics of paragraph styles, character styles, all those other styles. That's the thing. There you go. You've got the 101. You can go as deep as you want to. I encourage you to go into InDesign and play around and find purposes, find reasons, find the dream per situation of what you would use those for. I guarantee you, once you start using them, you will not go back, especially if you're doing or rather, specifically, if you are doing multi-page documents, you will never not use them. I promise you. But I have a multi-page document on my own that I gotta go work on, so I'm gonna get out of here. Before I go, though, please do me a favor. If you haven't done so already, subscribe, like, do all the things, but do the thumbs up, share with the people that you know you wanna share with. I really appreciate that. And if you have any other thoughts, any other comments, any other questions, or rather topics that you would like me to discuss, whether it's InDesign or Photoshop, I'm not the best on Illustrator, but I am going to be doing a video where I compare why you would build an Illustrator versus why you would build an InDesign because I don't think a lot of people understand why you would do one versus the other. I may do a video about that. If you have other thoughts, other questions you want me to talk about as far as Adobe stuff or anything that I do, please do me a favor, just leave me a comment and tell me, hey Dave, talk about this thing, and maybe I will. On that note, I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you very much for hanging out. I really appreciate you. Stick around if you wanna watch another video or so, or not, and we'll see you next time. Remember, be good today, be better tomorrow. See ya.